I'm Chris Oliver and I'm Professor of Neurodevelopmental Disorders at the University of Birmingham. And I just want to give you a bit of context to the study that was published in the uh, November issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. And the work that's described in the study comes from uh, a research program that was funded by both Cerebra and Angelman's UK. And it's part of a program of research in which we are looking at behavioural phenotypes. So this is the relationship between a particular genetic difference in children with a neurodevelopmental disorder and the behavioural outcome. And generally our strategy is to ask the parents what um, their priorities are for their children and then we try to characterise that problem and look ahead to the intervention. So you see in the early stages of that research program and this piece of work was carried out by a very talented PhD student, Effie Pearson, and she's going to describe the study to you. Hi, I'm Effie and I'm going to take you through some of the main findings from our scope and review of 17 papers that explored the broader communication profile of Angelman syndrome across four main themes of forms of communication, functions of communication, alternative and augmentative communication or AAC and communicative interventions. The key take home message from our paper regards the specificity of the speech impairment to Angelman syndrome and consequently this impl the implications that this has for the understanding of the role gene UB3A which is the gene that causes Angelman syndrome but also the benefits of intervention and use of AAC within this population. Evidence for our argument regarding the specificity of the speech impairment comes from papers reporting wide variability across forms and functions of communication across individuals with Angelman syndrome, which really contrasts with the near universal absence of speech. Given this dissociation, this implies that the speech impairment is an isolated problem. Specifically, this variability exists between genetic causes of Angelman syndrome, with those individuals who have a non-deletion cause of Angelman syndrome tending to have greater communicative abilities than individuals with a deletion. More evidence for the specificity of a speech impairment problem in Angelman syndrome comes from the ability of children to be, acquire alternative forms of communication and that interventions that have been implemented with children within Angelman syndrome have been effective. Our paper is an important addition to the literature as given the rarity of Angelman syndrome it is unlikely for all clinicians to be familiar with the communication profile and the specificity of impairments. However this review now provides an efficient resource and a comprehensive overview of this profile. So please go and have a look at it in the November issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. Thank you for watching.